Do you buy into like the idea that like the gold price is suppressed, or do you think that that's just kind of like something that gold bugs say to make themselves feel better about like, hey, it's not <laughs> mooned yet? I, I I'm I don't know the answer to this. Uh, I'm curious to know your thoughts. You know what? Um, is it suppressed? As in, is it is it like intentionally kept down by the government? I don't know the answer to that question. Is it manipulated? Absolutely. I mean, that's not that's not a conspiracy theory. There's we can there's a long history of fines that have been handed to the bullies, the biggest bullion banks over the last decade or so, where they were active and actively manipulating the gold price. This is not like a a conjecture or or a tinfoil hat thing. I mean, there's there's fines, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, manipulated, absolutely. Suppressed, don't know. That's a little harder to prove. Do they have an incentive to suppress it? I'd say, yeah, they, they, I think they do. Like, is that proof that they're doing it? I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, that's a good point. For the fund that you had or you uh, partnered with, what was like your strategy? Like when you guys had investors or LPs in the fund, were you buying like physical bullion or were you buying gold miners or was it like a combination? What was, what was your strategy there? Yeah, so it wasn't really what we what would be considered a managed fund. It was just basically um, a, a long physical gold fund. It was very simple. We would have someone come in. They'd send us money. We'd buy physical gold. We'd stick it in a vault. We'd sit on it. When they redeemed, we would sell the gold or send it to them. Like you could redeem for cash or gold. Yeah, very simple. Like we weren't trying to achieve any kind of alpha over the price of gold or anything like that. It was just for people who wanted to, to buy physical gold. And didn't nice. want to sit on. So there, there, there's a threshold that you reach at which you may not want to keep take delivery and put the gold in your house, right? Yeah. Like if you're buying millions of dollars worth of gold, do you really want to keep that in your house? Probably not. There's some point at which institutional custody of gold starts to make more sense from a security perspective. Yeah, it makes sense. I guess yeah. you could even argue it from like the small holder perspective too. If you buy $10 worth of gold, is it worth it to ship it to your house? I mean, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it depends on why you're buying it. You know, yeah. there's a lot of different reasons why people buy precious metals. So yeah. <laughs> precious metals, folks in general, I mean, they're very prepper minded. You know, they're like, let's prepare for all potentially bad scenarios. So there's a lot of different reasons why people do it. But in size, you know, you start to get to that point where you might want to yeah. have an institutional uh, vault kind of situation. That makes a lot of sense. I've always kind of bought into the idea of like, if you're an extreme prepper, would it not be better to hold like ammo, guns, and like extra water and food rather than gold bars? Do you buy into that idea? Because I feel like if if the world go, gets that bad and like something like Bitcoin stops working because the internet goes out and the power goes out, we're probably going to have bigger problems than like holding the yellow rock and trying to trade it. Like I'd rather probably have bullets or or food or, or yeah. water at that point. I don't know. What are your thoughts no, on that? No, I think it's a great question. I, I, I My answer is all of the above, right? Why not have all the above? Because, <laughs> all right, so let's just think about it for a second. If, and, and by the way, I don't think the chances of these scenarios occurring are very high. Like when I think about these things, I always think, so, think in terms of, all right, well, let's put this on a, on a, on a scale of probabilities. What is the probability that we're going to have you know, total war and EMP strikes and the whole grid goes down and like we're all cavemen again, right? What are the chances? I think pretty small. They're bigger now than maybe maybe in the last 20 years, but they're still pretty small, right? Less than 3% maybe. Um, but if those events did occur, I would want to have – all of the above. You need water. You need food. You need shelter. You need defense and protection, right? Which is where the bullets come into play. You, and you need a means of transacting too, because not hopefully you can transact with some humans who are still human, versus the people who you know. The, in a scenario like that, I do think the masks will come off. I think there's a large, larger percentage of the population than people realize who will start to do really things that we would consider not civilized right now. In a situation like that, and in, you know, you need a way to deal with both. So the bullets are for the people who are not civilized, and then the the silver is for the people who are. <laughs> or maybe you're trading in coffee or whatever, right? Like, I don't know. 
small yeah. percentage chance of any of that unfolding, though. 